May the Spirit of God give you ears to hear, give you an encouragement by His Spirit, by His um, countenance of His presence. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. I'm going to get on here and just uh, talk about, again, a part two of focus versus distraction. Um, what does it mean to be focused? What does it mean to be distracted? Well, focus is narrow concentration on whatever you are trying to concentrate on uh, or paying close attention to. You know, us as believers, it, as Christians, those who are truly born again, we are focused. We have narrow concentration on the things that matter, which is the will of God. And that is valuable to the Christian's uh, life. What is distraction? Again, it is it is uh, to disturb or when you're disturbing your thoughts and you do uh, trouble greatly in your mind and in your heart. And I'm talking to the believers. I'm talking to the truly born again ones who are born again. When you are troubled in your mind, bewildered or agitated or distressed, you are distracted. Even pleasurable ones that seem to be pleasurable. If you're not focused on the things of God, you are distracted. So I um, just want to minister the word of God in encouragement on how to stay focused. You want to be focused. God wants you focus on him and beginning in the day, beginning of the day to start off in prayer. And I'm going to take the, the beam out of my own eye because... At times, it is a struggle to get up in the morning and seek him first. Now, God does give strength. God gives grace to the humble. And in, in, in the, the, the promises of God, he gives you strength. You, when you make the Lord, your God, his, uh, your strength out of the joy of his spirit, he gives it to you. And so to love him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul and with all of your strength, he, he blesses you and you have the focus necessary to focus on him more because he wants to empower you. He wants to give you the mind of Christ and to willfully receive it. There is great, great measures of blessings, great measures of, of signs and wonders that you are able and capable of. He has given the true Christian the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt the believer in Christ Jesus. And yes, we do not rejoice in that alone, but we rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So I want to get into and we'll talk about a few things here. Um. In regards of focus, uh, I want to take a look at Proverbs 4, the end of Proverbs 4, and I'm going to um, I'm gonna talk about uh, Stephen in the book of Acts. So let me go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 4, and praise the Lord, turn right to it. So it says in verse 23, so I did mention in my last video about how to stay focused. I mentioned about the dangers of pride and, and, the, and the necessity of being humble. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so, out of the issues of your heart, your heart and my heart, there are issues. There, and, and the heart needs to be renewed by the Spirit of God by committing and submitting to him in his presence and his his uh, his commandments. The word of God says in Psalm 19 that his commandments are pure, enlightening the eyes. And so we rejoice in that. We take the light in the Lord. We take the light in his presence. So in Proverbs uh, chapter four, verse 23, it says to keep your heart with all diligence, mean to guard your heart with all diligence. And it says, for out of the out of it are the issues of life. So what are the issues of your heart? 
You are born with a sinful nature. You are born. And the word of God also as as most quoted verse, one of the most quoted verses in John, uh, Jeremiah 17 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked because of the fall of man. And the devil is a deceiver. So meaning that myself and another brother was talking about this in, uh, one day. Uh, we was talking about how Satan, when he was Lucifer in heaven, how close he was with the Lord. He was the most beautiful angel ever created. The most beautiful angel. And so to be that close in the glory of God. you, uh, the, the devil who is Satan. Who was, who was known as Lucifer. There was a great measure of glory in wisdom and understanding and tremendous levels of an anointing because the devil is anointed just in a different way. Uh, you know, angels are anointed. So the devil within himself, he took it and he wanted to be like the most high God. He wanted to be like God. He said, I will. And that's where pride began. Pride began with Lucifer. I will be like the most high God. So he was able as reason why he's known as a deceiver. He was able to deceive angels, angels in heaven. So that's why a third of the angels fell with Lucifer, a.k.a. the devil, a.k.a. Satan, fell to the earth. Jesus says, I saw Satan fall to the ground or fall to the earth like lightning. And so the devil is judged. The devil is judged. But yet. His time is short. Now you have carnal music. Now you have sinful music and sinful mo uh, movies, wicked movies. There's sin in the earth. God cursed the ground because of sin. And so you have distractions. You have a multitude of distractions that man gives their heart and mind to. And because of the sinful nature, you have issues in your heart. So... To keep your heart with all diligence, diligence meaning strong effort, diligence meaning to put forth the necessary effort with your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and guard it. Guard your heart with all of, guard your heart with, because out of it proceeds the issues of life. You want to protect your heart. And how you protect your heart? Your eyes, your ears, and what you speak. You have to think before you speak. That's wisdom. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you take delight in the Lord every day, growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives you the measure of uh, faith, the measure of wisdom, the measure of understanding to endure and to grow because you are classified as a branch. The Lord in Isaiah was classified as a, the stem of Jesse, the root of and a branch with a capital B. So, which was prophesied about John chapter 15. I love to reference John chapter 15. Jesus says, I am the true vine. Meaning, I am that branch. I am the stem of Jesse. I am the root. He says in Revelation, I am the root of and the offspring of David. So, out of Jesus, out of Jesus, we are branches. We are. Abide in the true vine to bear the fruit of his spirit, his righteousness, the nine fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, meekness, faith, patience and temperance, which is called self-control. That that is described how you receive that. You got to focus every day on the Lord. You have to have the proper amount of narrow concentration to God Almighty every day. Receive your daily bread. The daily bread is the word of God and feeding on Jesus, feeding on him so you can be empowered by his spirit to endure. And you can be classified as a king and a priest. He's called you a king and a priest. Why? Because you are made in his image and his likeness. So. Verse 24, 
It, it tells you how to guard your heart. It tells you how to keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Verse 24 says, put away from you a forward mouth. A forward meaning a, a perverse or deceiving mouth. And perverse lips put far from you. And it says, now here's the focus right here. Let your eyes look right on. Right on what? Right on the things that matters. Right on, not on vanity, not on futile things, but the things that are required for you to endure. And so let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids look straight before you. So it says this in the last two verses, ponder the path of your feet. So when you're, when you're looking right on, your eyes is focused on what it met, what matters it says, ponder or consider the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established. That describes focus, narrow concentration on the Lord. Because God has given man wisdom. And to fear God, to fear the Holy One of Israel, God gives wisdom to those who fear him. Turn, And it says, turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. That's how you keep focus. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Whether you're in worship, you don't pay attention to those around you are worshiping. I mean, it's encouraging, but your focus is to glorify God. Don't look to the left hand or the right. You focus on the Lord God Almighty. In prayer, when you're seeking God, pull down the distracting thoughts. Pull down, cast down every imagination from the multitude of business, pull it down. You got your God giving you weapons, and they are not carnal. And a carnal mind is enmity with God. And again, I'm I'm preaching this out of encouragement for the believer. Now, for the those who don't believe, those who are ungodly, you're not going to understand this message. And trust me, you're not going to understand it. But if you have ears to hear, if you have the necessity to want the things of God, want the necessary focus, then this message is for you. So it says, turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. And God describes evil in so many different ways all through the word of God, all through the Bible. Man fell. Sin entered in. Sin is evil. Sin is an offense to God. Sin is is the reason why God cursed the ground, and then you and then you have everything in that is classified as sin from murder. Cain murdered his brother, the world's first murderer. Cain murdered his brother Abel because of uh, the, the God did not receive his offering or his sacrifice. Um, then you have the 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 curses of. Uh, uh, generational curses and let me reemphasize that generational curses of sin because of uh, there's lying there's murder there is hatred there is uh all types of sins that that is classified as generational curses and you don't want you want to break those you want to break those gen, uh, generational curses in your life and so I want to uh, get it. Let me transition right here in Acts chapter 7. So you have Stephen. Stephen had rebuked those uh, that arrested him. Um, matter of fact, let me back it up in chapter 6. Now, it's, in verse 8, it says, it talks about Stephen. Stephen was full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now, to do great wonders and miracles among people that you have to be full of the Holy Ghost. You have to receive, you have to be focused on the things of God and his will for your life so you can do the work and the will of God. You And to, to do that, you need to obey Jesus Christ, commit to Jesus. He will direct your path. The word of God says that also in Proverbs. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. He will direct your path. So Stephen was focused. Stephen was focused. And it says in verse 9 of Acts chapter 6. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, 
and the Cyrenians and the Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. So there was there was a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Holy Ghost. What is it? Um, persecuting him. They, thank you, Holy Ghost. Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom. They was not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. So that. That takes great measures of focusing on the Lord, especially in prayer. God will take you higher. You have a high calling on your life. You are to exalt the Lord God Almighty. He is exalted in your mind. He is exalted in the thoughts of your heart. He is exalted. If you make the Lord God Almighty your life, and the length of your days, God will bless your life. And Brother Joseph does not lie about that. I am not. I hate lying. Every believer should hate lying. The word of God says, deliver my soul from lying lips. So that should be the will of God for your life as well. If you are dealing with certain sins. So Stephen was focused. And so verse 10 and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. They Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him in, uh, to the council and set up false witnesses. The same thing they did, the same thing they did to Jesus. They set up false witnesses. They want to find fault in a person who is blameless and it takes a focused person who is narrow, concentrated on the will of God. That makes you blameless. Jesus commands to be perfect for the Lord. Your God in heaven is perfect. Perfection unto God makes you blameless and it, 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 it um, reveals to you. It reveals to yourself within you. And to everyone who is a Christian that you are focused. That's the will of God. They stirred up. So it, so it says uh, what Stephen, what they try to say Stephen did. They set up false witnesses which said this man sees not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that. This Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looked steadfastly or intentionally on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. So in verse 14, they are still trying to say that Jesus, what Jesus meant when he said in John chapter 3, uh, no, chapter two, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. So they still did not believe that Jesus was talking about his body, which is his temple. Your body, your my, my body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. They did not. They still did not believe that because there are blind leaders. There was blind leading the blind. And Jesus says in John chapter nine, he says, for judgment I have come into the world that they that see not might see and they that see might be made blind. So the blind are in darkness. They're going to persecute the righteous. They're going to um, accuse falsely to the believer who preaches the gospel, who preaches the word of God in all delight of the Lord. You're going to have those who oppress you, but God will equip you with the Holy Ghost with things because, again, our weapons are war of warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God in the pulling down of strongholds. We pray, we seek God, God equip us. So what does it say here? So the last verse in verse uh, uh, chapter six. Verse 15 says, and all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on Stephen on him saw his face as it was as it had been the face of an angel so stephen in the next chapter he uh this is how focus and every time i reach uh acts chapter 7 when stephen goes into death 
He takes them. He takes them through the law of Moses. He takes them back in detail to Abraham and the sacrifices that he did. And let me just go ahead and read it. I got to read it because this is some intense focus by the Spirit of God through Stephen. And it says, uh, he said, men and brethren in verse 2. Men and brethren and fathers, hearken or pay attention to the God of glory appeared to the our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charan and said to him, get out of your country and from your kindred and come into the land which I shall show you. He go he goes through it. So I'm, I want to comb through this. So you can have understanding because he's describing also focused prophets. Abraham, he was focused on the will of God and he loved the Lord. He even took a sacrifice. He, he was about to sacrifice his son. And the Lord saw that Abraham is faithful in obeying. So he stopped Abraham in uh, for sacrificing his son. And then he blessed him. So Stephen went into the detail. He went to the went to the, the the laws of Moses and what happened to Moses, what happened to Joseph. And then it, this, one of the verses that stood out to me in verse 42. So it talks about the children of Israel who disobeyed by making other gods, making other gods. In verse 42, it says, Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O you house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? So these men, the, uh, the Hebrews, the children of Israel, those who complained and murmured, those who did not want to obey God. They were distracted because they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back to the house of bondage. They wanted to go back to what the Lord delivered them from. They was distracted because of the, the conditions and the issues of their heart. Their heart was wanting to wanting another God that they can follow or make. They wanted to obey a God they cannot see or hear or cannot taste and touch, but God gave them over to their mind. That's what happens when you are um, professing to be Christian or, you know, you, 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 you turn your heart from the things of God and you turn to idols. You allow distraction in your mind. You allow distraction with your desires, your own desires. And it says here in verse 43. Yes, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your God, lowercase g, Riphim figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. So the Lord Stephen explained this. He's explained this in the synagogue to those who wanted to put him away. He's explaining this, and he's describing those who are distracted. The children of Israel who complained and murmured were distracted with their own heart, with the issues of their own heart. Yes, they even complained. The word of God says they even complained at the parting of the Red Sea. This is what's going on. When you are setting your heart and your affections on the earth, you are distracted. When you are setting your mind and heart on the thing, on the cares of this life, the things that gives you distress and troubles your heart. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. How do you let not your heart be troubled? Neither let it be afraid. You focus on God in Christ Jesus. Focus delivers from distraction. It is the will of God for your life to be narrow, concentrated on Jesus. To follow him in your mind, in your heart, your soul, and your conversation. God is holy. He commands all to be holy, 
for the Father in heaven is holy. That is the will of God for your life. So, uh, verse 44, our fathers had the tabernacle of witness. This is Stephen still speaking. In the wilderness, as he had appointed speaking to Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus to the possession of the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. So he's going into the days of David. So let me go ahead and get to the point of the matter. So Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost, the word of God says, he's about to get to the issue of their heart because it says they were cut to the heart. So he says in verse 50, let me begin right here in verse 47. Verse 47 says, but Solomon built him a house. Built who a house? The Lord's house. Because it was the will of God. In 48, how be it the most high dwells not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? So the people who complained and murmured that Stephen was uh, bringing back uh, to their, I guess, their remembrance because they have forgotten the things of God, the things of the law of Moses and Stephen being full of the Holy Ghost and focus, he brings to their re uh, remembrance, but then he rebukes them. He calls them in verse 51, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. He's pointing the finger at them in the righteousness of God. He's righteously judging them and condemning them because of their disobedience and their persecution and their distraction. Because of their sin that they allow in their heart. He called them uncircumcised in heart and ears. Let me see where I'm at. Lost my place. Verse 52. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So he's describing they have not kept the law of Moses. They can't. Jesus Christ, who is perfect in thought, word, and deed. He obeyed the Father with perfection and focus, who, who is made as an example for the believers to focus, to be like Jesus. You want to be like Jesus. That's the will of God. You need to follow Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. So, where am I? Where am I? 54. When they heard these things, they heard they were cut to the heart. So they were cut to the heart, meaning they were severely convicted. Again, I did. I said this in another video. When you are cut to the heart, what do you do with that conviction? Do you receive it as, Lord, what must I do to be saved? I am a sinner. I did bad things. I blasphemed you. I've committed adultery. I've lied. I've stolen. I've dishonored my parents. I did so many things that offended you. That's what being cut to the heart looks like for those who want Jesus. Those who want salvation. Salvation is a free gift. And the word of God says the wages of sin is death. But the free gift through God is through Christ Jesus. Do you receive the cutting to the heart with that kind of conviction? Or is your heart so solidified in pride that when you're cut to the heart you want to persecute you want to be like these people who was about to stone Stephen and again I where's that I'm, keep on losing my place Lord God help me where's that where's that who received the law by not disposition 54 when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth but he B Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly, meaning intentionally focused to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He saw Jesus standing. 
So it's like he received a a standing ovation. He got a Stephen got a standing ovation from Jesus Christ the Lord. He saw Jesus standing in heaven because he preached the gospel. He preached the word of God and they were convicted. They was cut to the heart because of their conviction. That takes great measures of focus in Jesus. That takes great tremendous focus Narrow concentration, close attention to Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel, to minister the Word of God, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, being instant in season and out of season. Verse 56, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens open up and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran on him with one accord. They rushed him because they didn't like what they was hearing. They was convicted and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul, who was later being known as the Apostle Paul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not. So Stephen was merciful still. He said, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So he saw the, Stephen saw the glory of God. He lived a focused, purposeful life because he had the Holy Ghost. And he loved God with his heart, mind, soul, and strength. What does that look like? What is my encouragement to you? Say, focus on the Lord God Almighty. God will take you higher. He will take, take you deeper in his glory. And you got to want that. You have to want that. For the unbeliever, you must be born again to receive that measure of focus. You must be born again. Turn away from the entertainment of this world. Turn away from the drunkenness. Turn away from your abominable sin like homosexuality. Turn away from all these things that you are deceived by from the devil. Because again, like I mentioned in this video, the devil, Satan, name means deceiver. People are deceived because of their own thoughts and their own pride of life. You become available and open to deception and then you begin to sin willfully and God can seal you and I and I say this carefully I say this with strong warning as a watchman God can seal you in that condition you don't want to be sealed in that condition because when you're sealed in that condition and you're okay in this life and you think you're saved God can give you over to what is called a reprobate mind, which means he will give you to a mindset that you are incapable of repenting and coming to Christ Jesus for salvation. Do you want that? The division is this. This is the division because Jesus came, says, I come to divide. And I'm paraphrasing. I says, say this. I, I came with us. I have come with a sword to separate. Um, how you put it? Uh, the the father from his son, and the the uh, the wife from her husband, and the mother from his child. As I paraphrase that, he brings the sword brings the vision. Jesus Christ, the sword of the spirit, is the is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God, and so you have to be focused. And the division is this: you are either a sheep or a goat. You are either good or evil. You are either born again or not. You are either um, a wise man or a foolish man. Which one will you be classified as? And you may not even notice, like for the unbeliever, you may not even notice that you're foolish, but you're foolish. And the word of God will expose it. The word of God, Jesus Christ and his presence and 
Salvation expose your heart. And when you're transparent with the Lord, you are you are asking God to search your heart of every evil way and to purify you because the Lord is he who searches your reins in your heart and to get give you according to your works and the fruit of your doings. He, he, he wants to expose the evil in your heart and you have to receive the conviction. You have to receive the, the cutting to the heart because it says in John chapter 3 verse 20. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved or exposed. Do you, you need to be a child of light. You need to be a child of the day. So you can be a so you can live a transparent life before God Almighty because He knows you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your heart and your secret motives. Jesus says there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. And there is nothing revealed that will not remain hidden. You will be judged. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the duty of man. For God will bring every work with every secret thing into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So when you stand before a holy God, he's going to judge you for everything that you have done, whether it be good or whether it be evil. For the believers, for those who are born again, we're going to be judged only you know, for the good, for the good, because we're in Christ, Christ Jesus, who is perfect. Who was perfect, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. We're going to stand before him and we're going to enter in. For the unbeliever, for the goats, the foolish. The word of God says, let a fool, let a man be robbed. Let a man meet a bear robbed of her cubs or her webs. Meet a bear rather than a fool in his folly. So this, those who are wicked are foolish. Those who are in willful sin don't care about nothing. Pride of life. You are classified as a fool. That's what the word of God describes. The fool. You love cursing. You love doing wicked things. You love entertainment. You love the, thing, the cares of this life. You are a fool. You are a fool. Goats. You are a goat. You are a goat and you will be on the left hand of the Father and Jesus Christ who will judge you. You are a fool. That's the word of God. That's what it's describing the fool. You want to be likened to a wise man when you hear the words of God and obey it. Jesus, com Jesus commands all men everywhere to repent of their sin and believe the gospel. Believe on him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was able to save you from your soul. Jesus Christ wants re re redemption from you. You want to be redeemed. You want to be redeemed. The word of God says in Psalm 19, I love quoting this one. It says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And it says this. It says, more to be desired are they than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. That means when you fear the Lord and you and hit, knowing that his judgments and Righteousness are true and you desire God, you must desire him more than what you want to love, more than your family, more than your loved ones, more than any material, which is also classified as idolatry, more than anything on the face of this planet. You must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, and with all of your soul. That takes the focus of the Christian necessary for your life. You don't, anything else that you allow in your mind and heart that takes away your time, you are distracted. 
you are distracted. And don't get into it because there is dangers in that route. You will be led to the broad way that leads to destruction that many are on. And that destruction is the way to death and hell. You don't want that for your life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. And I have some notes right here from service. My pastor mentioned faith is a focus on the Lord. That is that is so profound to me. Faith in God. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's the will of God. We don't focus on material. We don't focus on the entertainment and the media and the politics and all this, the cares of this life. Because everything apart from Christ, everything that is in this life is futile, vanity, vexation of spirit, grasping for the wind. Except the path that leads to Christ Jesus. Faith is the substance of the evidence not seen. That means you can't see it, but you know you can trust in it. So you can't see God, but you know there is a God in your heart, in everyone's heart, even the atheists, even the agnostics. Everybody know God, God exists. The reason why they're atheists and agnostics is because they hate God. And they want to believe there is another way. They want to believe on the evolution they want to believe on man was created from apes and amphibians and amphib the amphibians came from the, the planet and involved evolution. They want to believe on the Big Bang Theory. They want to believe on things that is false and they die in that condition. They have to give an account for unbelief because the word of God says in Revelation 21, 8, that all unbelievers will have their part in the lake that burns with fire. But guess what? Every atheist and agnostic that dies in that condition, that goes to hell, is now a believer. They now believe on Jesus. But guess what? It's too late for them. There is a, 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 a I used to watch uh, sports entertainment, wrestling. There's one wrestler that is known as Stone Cold Steve Austin. I remember come across a video like, what is his beliefs? He says he's he, he's agnostic. So he says when he die, he's going to go into just go into the grave. He already has his, his life planned out when he dies. So he says his he's going to be cremated and his ashes are going to be scattered. He says he's just going to go into the ground. He says he doesn't believe in going to the the to heaven in the pearly gates. And the pearly, that's that's his that's what his his thinking is on that, and then he, he I forgot what he said about hell, but that's where he's going if he continues to believe in that belief system of being agnostic. He says he's just going to go into the ground, and many agnostics, many atheists believe the same thing. They believe they're just going to not exist. They believe they're just going to go into the ground and just die, and not and not to exist. No. When you die, when you die, you're going to stand before God Almighty, who is holy, who is just, who is righteous, and you will give an account for your life. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name done many wonders and in your name cast out devils? I will declare to you, says Jesus. Depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness, meaning iniquity. So the, the atheist who dies in that condition, they practice iniquity with their unbelief. The agnostics, they die in that condition. The homosexual, the drunkard, the marijuana smoker, those who are setting their affections on the things of the earth and the cares of this life, who dies with distraction and give into it. They will have their part in the lake that burns with fire. Do you know distraction makes you an unbeliever? Distraction makes you an unbeliever. Distraction makes you an unbeliever. If you continue to set your mind on the things of this earth, you are distracted and you will be given over to it. That is not the will of God for your life. For the focus, we hearken to the voice of God. Our mind is sound to his voice. 
power, love, and a sound mind, sound wisdom. The Lord gives to those who uh, he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous and a sound heart, which is described the life of the flesh. Meaning your heart is sound to the voice of God. God speaks in many different ways and you hear his voice in your heart, your mind. He speaks to you because what? Day to day utter speech, night to night shows knowledge. God is always speaking. He's always speaking. You just have to have ears to hear. Will you hear? Will you hear? Will you receive salvation through Christ Jesus? Has anything convicted you through the gospel that I preach that the sin that you once loved you now hate? You must hate sin. God hates sin. You must love what God loves. That's how you stay focused. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.